Let's take a look at section 3.1, which deals with predicates and quantified statements. So a predicate is a sentence with a finite number of variables and becomes a statement when specific values are substituted in for those variables. So let's have a look at an example here. So if P of X is X cubed equals X with domain R, that's a predicate. Um, and once you substitute in a real number for x, it becomes a statement, which may be true or not true. Uh, that capital P is referred to as a predicate symbol. Um, so in the various examples in this section, you'll see, you know, often we use a capital P, a capital Q, but sometimes other capital letters. So P of 1 would be the statement 1 cubed equals 1, which happens to be true. P of negative 1 and P of 0 are also true statements. If you look at other values of X, uh, that would give you a false statement. So we could look at negative 1, 0, and 1 as a set, which we'll call the truth set, for P of X. It's the set of all uh, real numbers, okay, or all elements of the domain, which in this case is real numbers, uh, that make P of X true. Okay, so in this section, we've got two symbols that are introduced, and we're going to see these a lot through this chapter. Um, this, what looks like an upside down capital A is called the universal quantifier. And this backwards capital E uh, is called the existential quantifier. One way, by the way, to distinguish between the two and remember which is which is you can think of the universal quantifier as taking the place of for all which, you know, all for A, and the existential quantifier, you can think of as taking the place of the words there exists, so E for exists, um, if that helps you remember, if not, you know, you might find a, a, a different way that you can uh, distinguish between the two. So let's take an example where we're going to call S the set with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And P of X will be the predicate, X is a multiple of 2. And we're going to assume the domain of P of X is this set S. And we'll define another predicate, Q of X, for X squared equals 2X, um, with the same domain S. So if we take our universal quantifier and write for all x in s, p of x, that's called a quantified statement. Okay, going back to chapter one, this is an example of something that we referred to at that time as a universal statement. It's saying something is true for all elements of a set, s. Okay, so we could read that as for all x in s, p of x. Um, or for all x and s, x is a multiple of 2, okay, because that's what p of x means in this example. Okay, It's a false statement um, because we can check and see that not all of the elements of s are multiples of 2. Okay, uh, Another quantified statement using the other quantifier is there exists x and s, such that q of x. Um, so that, that would mean that there exists an x and s such that x squared equals 2x. Um, that's a true statement um, because if you look at, at the elements of s, there is an element for which x squared equals 2x. Okay, that's true for 2. So the truth set is not empty, so the existential statement is true. Okay, let's stick with this set S that we've been talking about. 
and define some new predicates. So a of x is going to be the predicate x is less than 3. b of x will be the predicate x squared is in s. Uh, we're going to assume the domain of both of those predicates is s. And let's consider the quantified statement for all x in s, if a of x, then b of x. So that is a universal conditional statement. Okay, It's universal because of that universal quantifier. And it's conditional because of the if-then. Okay, So this is also something we first saw in chapter 1. So we could ask ourselves, is that a true statement? So to decide whether it's true, we need to think about what a of x and b of x mean. So this would be saying that for all elements in S, if x is less than 3, then x squared is in S. So we can look at the elements of S that are less than 3 and see if their squares are in S. And the answer is yes, that's true. For each element of S which is less than 3, the square of the element is also in S. Okay, so 1 squared is an S, 2 squared is an S. The same statement could be expressed more simply as if A of X then B of X. Okay, that uses something known as implicit quantification. Um, so you're not actually using the quantifier, but it's implied that you're talking about all X in whatever domain is um, under discussion. And if you're going to do that, you should really, it should be clear what the domain is. You know, so maybe uh, this is given as part of a problem, and at the beginning they told you that to assume that the domain is all real numbers or something. Um, but if there's ever any uncertainty about what the domain is, it should be stated. Uh, symbolically, we we have a new arrow that's um, given to us in this um, section, which is um, closely related to this idea of the the logical connective that we saw, that conditional connective we saw in chapter two. Um, this arrow looks a little different. And it just happens to be the way that it's written when you're dealing with um, predicates. Um, we won't see that a whole lot, but if you do see that, that's um, it really just means that you're working with predicates, and um, you know that also involves this implicit quantification that you're talking about all x in the domain when you uh, when you see that type of um, statement. Okay, you'll see uh, examples in this section that ask you to go from a formal statement to an informal statement or vice versa. So when you see the, that expression, informal statement, uh, generally what they're talking about there is that a statement without using quantifiers or variables. So, you know, sometimes when you're reading a math text or, or reading some other uh, form of communication about mathematics, um, you might see something expressed in a very formal way with a lot of uh, symbols and notation and variables and so on and so forth. Or you might see something expressed in a rather informal way, which is, you know, closer to, you know, a plain English uh, expression of, of just trying to, to boil it down to the meaning without, um, without getting lost in, in kind of the notation. So here's a formal quantified statement. And since quantified statements are perhaps new to you, you know, um, you may not have encountered them before reading this section, um, you know, you may not be that comfortable with that kind of statement yet because you haven't had a lot of practice with it. Um, the advantage of that kind of formal statement is it's very concise. Um, 
but informally, what that really says is that for any integer, two times that integer is an integer, or another variation on that would just say twice any integer is an integer. Okay, so um, what there you'll see in this section are some exercises that are trying to get you comfortable going back and forth from formal to informal. Here's another example with an existential quantifier. Uh, there exists x in R such that x squared is less than x. So if we want to restate that without using quantifiers, without using variables, we could say there is a real number whose square is less than the number. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I wanted to say about this section in this video. Um, the topic of predicates and quantified statements does continue in the next section. And we kind of build on what we've been doing here. Um, and uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.